uh, I don't even know what episode number this is, because I feel like it's been a long time since I've done an episode of Hackers and Hearthstone. I'm going to look that up right now. This is my super professionalism. <laughs> um, and we are doing a tavern brawl this week, which seems pretty cool. You pick one hero, and then you get to pick another hero later on, and it kind of mixes the decks. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, ooh, this is episode six. Yeah. Yes. Do you like six? Is that like a uh, good number for you? Uh, I hear it's an unlucky number, but hey, let's roll with it. <laughs> oh yeah, it is an unlucky number, isn't it? Uh, it's even. I like it. Um, so what are you going to be talking with us about today? So uh, I think we had agreed the topic was going to be uh, my experiences with uh, mentoring in Correct. the uh, software development industry. And if it isn't, then I'm completely unprepared, so... <laughs> uh, hopefully mentoring. And now I have to pick my hero that I want to start with. Did you pick already and you're like waiting on me? Yep. That's okay though. Take your time. <laughs> it's so hard. Uh, I've tended to run with heroes that like if I have a deck that I like and it's got a good mechanic with a hero, I'll, I'll run with the hero. But you know, that's my strategy for this sort of thing. I only played once earlier today and I got completely trounced. And it feels so random because it's just like you're dealing with whatever you have, but I made a couple of bad moves. You know how that goes. I do indeed. All right. So I'm waiting for you to select a deck. All right. Oh, yeah. Select it. I need to actually hit the button. Hitting the button helps. Hitting the button does help. Um, so I could mentor you in Hearthstone about hitting buttons. Oh, nice. I almost picked a paladin. I'm happy I didn't now. these starting cards. Let's see how interesting these are going to be. Yeah, they're interesting, all right. And, yeah, I'm not going to talk too much during this because we have a lot of quick early decisions to make. Ooh. Ooh. Nice card back. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's the Overwatch one, you know. Uh, so that was hard. All right, so while I'm taking my turn, I'm going to take it a little bit slow so you can have some time to answer my super, super difficult question about if you were any Hearthstone card, which one would you be? That was actually the most difficult qu question, I think, to answer. Uh, yeah. So, um, the, I actually did a, a bit of searching through cards, because I've watched the episodes, and I know you tend to ask this question. The closest one I came up with was actually Ethereal Conjurer. Uh, it's a 6-3 uh, minion, I believe, cost 5. Oh. And it has a battle cry ability of discover a spell. And the reason that I picked that one is because, uh, at least in, I'm going to sound really old now, in sort of my heyday in the community, um, a lot of people knew me for being a researcher of sorts. So they could say, ask me about a topic, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, there's this great blog post, or you should go see this person, or, you know, yada, yada, yada. There you go. I think so. you are the highest cost card of anyone who has said before. I think most people's answers range about like a one or a two cost two mana cost card but you know well, I would not describe myself as a high roller but well there you go uh, let's <laughs> I mean, see. it's like a five I guess that's not really high cost but yeah, mid. yeah this is interesting I have not played with this particular type of tavern bra before holy wow okay um <laughs> that's that's tough I'm gonna go with this one and you have no idea if you made a good decision or not, because it's just like, nope. you're going to end up with some cards. Maybe they work well together, maybe they not don't. a clue. Oh, wait, this... Oh, wait, I don't know enough. Mm. <laughs> Jeez. Let's go with... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. I'm going to take a turn. To I'm a little concerned about that, but... Um, <laughs> all right. So diving into the mentorship, so what have you done, like what do you actually do as a mentor? So um, most of my experience has been with uh, a program called phpmentoring.org. It's sort of specific to the PHP language community. Um, what they do mostly is they pair people who are looking for a mentor up with mentors who have volunteered. Um, they're, they make it available on the site that you can sort of put in a bio like you know these are the things that I'm specialized in this is the way that I sort of work as a mentor etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, 
In my case, I've actually done quite a bit it's as far as like variety of activities. Uh, I do code reviews for people. In some cases, I'll actually get on video chat with them and we'll do like some peer programming. Mm -hmm. um, we'll discuss architecture or technologies they may want to use in their projects. Uh, I might recommend educational resources to them like websites or books or other people that I know of that may be specialized in the thing that they're trying to learn more about. Um, Uh, sometimes I help them with troubleshooting technical issues. Like today, I was helping somebody with an auto loading issue between Composer and PHP Spec. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they'll actually be like, uh, I want to work on some sort of project to exhibit my skills, and I don't really know what to work on. So sometimes I'll suggest things, usually things that are related to their non programming interests. Like, uh, one guy was really into professional wrestling. I'm like, so do up like a fan site, you know, have pages for individual wrestlers and different bits of information about them, upcoming matches, you know, mm -hmm. just basically sort of an informational site. This, you know, that gives you, as far as like managing content and such, that gives you sort of this crud functionality that you can start with that's basic enough but shows that you have some technical competency. Um, I've been asked for career advice, like, uh, you know, I've got this job prospect, should I take it? Or I'm not really sure I'm happy in my current job, should I look for other things? Um, Have I provided... you, like, ever received sort of, like, detailed career questions like that, where you're just like, I, I have no idea <laughs> this it, it hasn't can be, come up? But... Yeah, I mean, this it, it's hard to provide specialized advice. A lot of times it's really the advice that they need is sort of more general. Mm -hmm. But, um, let's see. Uh, that's interesting. Oh, no. Um, no, I haven't, I haven't had too many that were really unique, to be honest. Most of them were sort of in one of those two categories, usually. Um, in some cases, they might be along the angle of, I'm not sure that I'm growing where I am, mm -hmm. or how to really evaluate that, um, or... They may be struggling with issues around work-life balance. Um, I feel like work-life balance is one of those things that a lot of programmers struggle with, especially because a lot of companies demand you sacrifice so much. And I think kind of getting to the point where you can be like, forget the company, I need to take care of myself as well. That's definitely one aspect. Um, another, I think, is that to a certain degree, we don't really, like, a lot of us have trouble shutting our brains off at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've had epiphanies for how to solve particular bugs that I was working on in the shower, on the way to drop my kids off at daycare, you know, it, they come at the really, at the weirdest times. I mean, yeah, I, I, I used to, I mean, one thing I do do now that I work home, at home, is that it's like, oh, I'm stuck on a problem, I'm going to go for a walk. Or, yep. like, go do something completely unrelated, and then I'm like, okay, I figured it out. Yep. But, yeah, it's it's always, yeah, definitely turning off the brain is really difficult. I used to have dreams about solutions to code problems. I have dreamed in code before, quite literally. Yeah. It can be kind of scary. It's, it's not, it doesn't, it's not as awesome as it sounds. Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, we, you know, like, a lot of people that do what we do, even, even do it in their spare time, it's like, it, it's. Yeah. I don't want to say it's an obsession because that makes it sound bad, but we're you know we're really passionate about what we do, and even to the, sometimes to the detriment of other people or activities in our lives. So, couldn't mentoring someone kind of help people cope with the fact that they can't turn off their brain? To kind of like being able to take that you know technical problem solving mind and kind of turn it on to like other people and trying to help them in the community. I think so. Um, and that's to a degree, I guess that's that's actually a good point. That's it does become sort of an outlet for what might otherwise be considered residual energy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I mean, that kind of leads into um, if someone is looking to mentor but doesn't know where to start, uh, what would you suggest that they do? So um, I mean, there I would hope that there are organizations similar to PHP mentoring in other communities. Um, but I mean, otherwise, you know, there are plenty of places to look for people who are looking to learn. Uh, people who would go to user groups, to some lesser extent, I think conferences. Um, 
those people may be looking to learn, but they may be on a generally on a sort of a mid level. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the support communities like Stack Overflow and to maybe a lesser degree Reddit uh, are people that are looking to learn or at least looking to get help with a problem. Um, I like PHP mentoring just because it's very specific in its focus. Mm -hmm. um, Let me see. This is interesting. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure if I want to do that. I didn't even get to mention it, but your dread scale move earlier on that just like kept doing the one damage made it really hard for me to put a lot of stuff on the board. <laughs> I was like, I need to get that out, and until like that's not on the board anymore, I can't put anything down. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a thing. All right, let's see. Let's do this. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you have. I'm just like about your face. Uh, all that hard work getting something on the board completely gone. All right. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, so like I said, user groups, conferences, support channels. There, a lot of people still use IRC, and it, there's this sort of uh, misconception that it's sort of an outdated and not really still used medium. But that's not true at all. Um, I actually met a lot of people from the community originally on IRC, and I still use it to communicate with them now. Mm -hmm. um, for people who are looking for a mentor, uh, sorry, did I interrupt you? No, no, no. You can keep going. Okay. Um, interesting. Uh, that doesn't really help me. Uh, let's do. Uh, Sorry, I started taking my turns faster. I was like, I'm doing that's... well. I can pick <laughs> up the speed here. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I guess I'll go with that. Um, I would definitely say to people who are looking for a mentor. Uh, do try to do your best to be very serious and committed about it. Mm -hmm. uh, treat your mentor's time like you would treat your own. Be prepared to do some of your own like work. Like me, I'm mostly an informational resource for people. That's the way that I kind of look at it. Is you know I can kind of try to guide you in the right direction, but ultimately a lot of what you get out of the relationship depends on what you put into it. Um, I would say do look for somebody who's a really good fit for you. Like that's part of the reason why, in the case of PP mentoring, they have the bios. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, if it, things just don't seem to be clicking with a mentor or you don't feel comfortable, try to find somebody else. Um, don't be afraid to have several mentors for different areas. Some people are relatively specialized in things like testing. Um, and don't be afraid to be both an apprentice and a mentor. There are a lot of people, at least in PP mentoring, who function as both. And that's I try to look at it the same way because I think. Regardless of what level somebody's at, I can learn something from them. Mm -hmm. So, have you been like a a mentee? I'm going to use that term. Not formally within that program, but I mean, I've learned a lot from other people. So mm -hmm. it's it's you know, it was more sort of a, on, on an informal ad hoc basis, I guess. But, okay. So from like that coin, um, what advice do you have people who are like seeking that sort of help and support from within the community, maybe in a ad hoc way and less formalized? Let me just be mostly be willing, I guess, to just get out there and put yourself out there socially. Um, I mean, a lot of people I think in the community are very willing uh, to to be you know be in a sort of mentoring uh, relationship. Um, so I definitely feel like there's always a level of discomfort when you're going out to another person and trying to seek out their assistance with something, especially when it can be hard to even just like talk about like, hey, I need help with the thing or I don't know what I'm doing in this given situation. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, and I mean, I definitely recommend honesty on the, the parts of both people. Uh, just you know, like I, a lot of times, will have to tell a mentee, "Look, I, this is not something that I know something about." Um, I at least, if if I usually, I can at least tell them I know somebody who does, or I mm -hmm. looked at this resource; it kind of seems legit. Um, or just you know, even if it's like the the mentee that had the issue with PHP spec, I haven't used PHP spec very much, but. Yeah. I was able to work through it locally on my own machine well enough, knowing what I know, that I was able to find a solution for him. So, it you know, it's to a large degree, it's simply learning things together. So it, it definitely takes a certain amount of vulnerability, but I would say don't be afraid of that. 
uh, depending on your community, and in the case of the PHP community, I think there are a lot of good people who exemplify this. Like I say, a lot of people are willing to help and are very understanding because really we were all novices at one point. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to win next turn, by the way. <laughs> so you know. Barely. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't that far above you. So. You were. You were at twenty-two, and then I'm out, I. Now I'm at eight. Yeah. So. Yeah, because I used, um, big, big things. Not enough big things, though. Uh, and so we're gonna have to do another one. Yep. It's okay. It's okay. I have an idea. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna totally win this time. You. You've piqued my interest. Yeah. I, instead of losing, I'm gonna win, and that'll work. Sounds like a good idea. That's how you, that's how that's how winning works, right? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let's go with. It's like too warm in here to actually be drinking tea, but um, I can't play without having a cup of tea. I don't know. I've, I've kind of figured that was a thing with you. Like, I've swaddled your Twitter feed enough to know that you're a, you're a tea drinker. Um, my, my wife actually likes, uh, what is it? It's um, uh, licorice tea. I want to say it's a, Egyptian, or at least branded as such, that apparently tastes good hot and cold. Yeah, it, 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 the, the licorice stuff is really yummy. I have a little bit of it. Um, okay, I have more questions, though. Shoot. Uh, other things not about tea. <laughs> Even though now my brain is just like off in tea land thinking about tea things. Uh, <laughs> so what have you learned from mentoring others? I think that's like one of the big important things is that not only are you helping other, people's grow, other people grow, you're also growing yourself. And that was probably the first thing I would have said is uh, definitely be open to learning from your, your mentees because that can happen a lot more often than you think. Um, patience is something that can be very difficult. I've learned this from both from being a, a mentor and from being a parent and just from being a developer in general. <laughs> um, uh, so, but all, even though it is difficult, always you know make make put it in the f focus of your mind to ha try to have patience anyway. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it can be really rewarding to see you know the fruits of your efforts and your princess's understanding and the things that they end up doing. Like I actually uh, at one point, um, I m uh, mentored a, a person who's uh, who's we're actually friends. Um, he at one point worked at uh, the same company I did. It kind of referred him. Um, he also wrote a book that he ended up asking me to write the foreword for. So, you know, these are all accomplishments of his that mm -hmm. I think to some degree I, I had some level of influence on, and that's, you know, that's a really cool thing. That is really cool. Um, um, I mean, even if you, even if you're not necessarily the type that sort of volunteers and, and puts yourself out there in that way, um, something to bear in mind is that by mentoring you have the ability to make the community that you are a part of better so even if you're doing it for entirely selfish reasons that's a good reason in and of itself right um uh, sorry I, I was uh kind of trying to think like um so imposter syndrome is like one of those like big things that we kind of talk about a lot but also a lot of people do experience within the programming community um, so how could someone who is kind of suffering from that imposter syndrome kind of also be able to step out and participate in uh, mentorship? I'm kind of jumping off, but... Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, uh, so, something that I heard once, and I can't tell you the source, but um, the, the gist of it was that genius is very relative to who's sitting in the room next to you. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say just try to go to try, try to be a part of some group like a, a local user group or try to attend a conference just be around people eventually or uh, as like part of one, one of the uh, other tech communities that I mentioned eventually you'll find somebody who knows less than you or at least in one particular area knows less than you mm -hmm. um, it's it's a process like it took me uh, I didn't start mentoring until I was about five years into the 
into uh, being a PHP developer, and I didn't find the community until about a year or two before that. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is tough. Um, <laughs> sorry, trying to think and deliver thoughts at the same time. Uh, that that is the inherent challenge in this whole process. I have it easy. I'm seeing that. From this. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, but no. I mean, I still, I still suffer from imposter syndrome from time to time, um, uh, and often, like of several of the apprentices that I've had, they honestly they had the skills when they came to me. They just needed encouragement, really, mostly. That's you know. Okay. So you know, I've met people in that position, and really, it's. Um, it, it's. I'm not sure that it's something we ever really all work past. We all, you know, this is sort of a very fake it to you, make it uh, tenant to the culture, right? <laughs> to some degree. I guess it's uh, like fake it to you, make it, and then keep trying to convince yourself that you've actually made it. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of levels of complexity there. That was interesting. Ooh, what'd you get? <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, that one can be trouble. That can be um, trouble. Yeah, so I'm going to go with that. that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it. we all feel like fakes, so that's something to keep in mind. Because chances are, you know, whether you are considering mentoring or considering trying to find a mentor, that person probably feels like a fake too. <laughs> um, like, I've honestly, I've felt that way not just about my job, but also about being a parent a lot of times. I... I, th I think I look, I'm not sure if a lot of people hold their parents in an idealistic light. I, I guess I kind of did. It, referred, it took me a while, uh, possibly longer than most, to figure out that they were just people. Yeah, I, I, I uh, relate as that, like, that's the common human experience is you're like, oh, you know, my parents are perfect. They're like the best people ever. And then you're like, oh, wait a second, they're flawed humans just like me. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like. I mean, depending on your life situation, I'm sure some people don't even need to go through that process because of whatever reasons, but I definitely think there's a huge process of that. And yeah, even looking at mentors and stuff and trying to be like, oh, okay, they make mistakes too. I honestly think that's a really positive thing for people to be able to see. Yeah. I mean, I like I admit I had a little bit of... When I first got into the community and I was still a relative noob, I had sort of a, a level of hero worship about people that I saw doing things like speaking at conferences and writing books and working for big name companies. And, you know, you talk to those people long enough, you realize the same thing. They're just people. Yeah. They're just people like you. Um, yeah. It can take a bit to get past that, you know, sort of, uh, I don't want to use the word idolatry cause, or idolization because that's kind of a bad word, but you get my just. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's, um, let's see. Did Where's I throw that? you off by ending my turn there? Nope. That's... Completely interrupted. <laughs> um. I'm just, no, I'm mostly looking at, like, okay, I'm picking very dis, sort of disjointed cards that don't really work so well together. <laughs> yeah, if you, it can be difficult. Um. Let's see. Combo, but I already uh, I played something this turn, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Let's do that. And this. You picked rogue. You are a <laughs> mage rogue. Yes. I, I admit, I always thought when I was playing this game early on that I was like, dude, if they had multi class, and that would be so badass. <laughs> and now they kind of sort of do. Yeah, just for this part. Um, did you play the one where. Uh, it was co-op. I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. That was uh, that was very interesting in the I way that they structured that. Really, really liked that. Um, it was, I, it was a, yeah, it was a very creative use of their existing interface. Yeah, because it, it had a taunt. They would just change what side it was on. Yeah. So you had to attack it. Oh man, it was. It was I, I, I had to wonder how, like, it, as far as the underlying source code, how flexible they had to make this or how much they did make this. And at this point, they may just be, like, sort of bolting things on. 
because it's like, okay, we never thought of trying to do that. <laughs> See, I felt kind of bolted on because of the way the game would end when you killed the yeah the, uh, main dude that you had to. It would just be like cut, like very sudden, as opposed to the usual like you explode slow motion. Uh, <laughs> okay, wait, I'm gonna let you take your turn, and then I'm gonna ask you another question. All right, because. Or I should ask you now so I can actually win this one. <laughs> but you don't actually win the, the pack from... Um... Clever. Not what I wanted. <laughs> Sorry. I just realized I'm really um, not playing well. Just gonna put that out there. <clears throat> so when other people watch me... They can be angry at me for just not playing well. Yes. Sorry for a second there. I, I, felt, I felt inclined to project jewels. I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, it's, um. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. And I was gonna ask you a question, and I got so into my turn that I forgot. So, I think you're winning. That or I'm just out of practice because I haven't recorded one of these in a little bit. But, uh, I guess the final question was what, at what stage in their career do you think people should really consider mentoring? Um, I feel like I kind of already asked that in so many words. But. That's alright. Um, I mean, honestly, I would say if, if you can go on to a support forum and look at basic questions and be able to answer any of them, that you're you're fine, you're ready, you have something to teach and that's really all you need I mean um, it's going to take time to in any mentoring relationship to sort of be able to fill out the other person and figure out where their technical competencies and weaknesses are and you know, it may turn out that the, the relationship ends up being inverted and that's fine mm -hmm. um, eventually you will get to a point where you learn more and you feel increasingly comfortable with it but I mean, everyone has to start somewhere yeah <clears throat> Ooh, pretty. Oh no. Oh, I probably should have comboed that. Oops. Yeah. Oh well. Uh oh. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Oh, I'm sad now. I lost both. I thought I would have thought Mage Hunter would have been a pretty good combination, but apparently it's not. Well, Mage Rogue, if it makes you feel any better, didn't seem to work so well together. Just I, I think it was more random luck than anything else. <laughs> I love all the rogue cards that had the combo though, especially Head Crack is like my favorite card ever. Yes. Because you can just keep cycling it through. Like once you get it, it's like it's over. I'm gonna keep doing yep. this forever. Yeah, I don't think there are that many cards that actually do that. Like, maybe Dreadsteed is sort of that way. Mm-hmm. You know, Dies comes back again, regardless of what else you do. <laughs> I kind of, like, I love those cards, but they're, they're pretty easy to get around. You just kind of... Yeah. You just kind of kill someone, and then you win. <laughs> that's how that works. Let's right? see, I think, I think there's one other one that's really annoying, is that... Uh, Dwarf with three health that if you don't completely kill it, it spawns a duplicate of itself. Yeah, that is, um, well, luckily it's no longer in play, right? Because I oh. think that was from... That yeah, might be in wild and not in standard now. I would hope so, because that yeah. card is so What's OP. It called? Um... I don't even remember. Oh. Let's see. I, you know, I... I know, I, I think I, I forget if I even have it. I don't think so. I do. Because I, I used to have a deck build entirely around it. Really? <laughs> uh, Maybe I don't have it. Grim Patron. Okay. Uh, I may not. Okay, no, I do not have that card. Because yeah, that's from the Grim Guzzler. Uh, Most annoying card ever. I hated decks when I had to play against with that card. <laughs> I love that card because you can just... <laughs> Did yeah. you play as um, a warrior for your patron deck? Because the warrior has a lot of things that lets you do one damage and then buff someone, or just do one damage to everything on the board. So I called it patron explosion when it would just be like all room <laughs> patrons. 
Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for um, chatting about mentorship. Um, can you give me the link for the PHP? Uh, what's it called? Sorry. Yeah, it's phpmentoring.org. phpmentoring.org. I will put that in the description. Um, and do you want your Twitter handle down there too so people can bug you about stuff? Sure, I'm uh, at Elazar. All right, awesome. Um, and thank you. Thank you, my pleasure.